Barma Milua Forest is one of six icon sites on the Murray River. It is the largest river red gum forest in the world. It's a big fan on the Murray River system that spreads flood water out as a pressure release valve during big flood systems. And it feeds the most amazingly complex wetland systems with a variety of different plants and animals that are found here. It just makes it an absolute beacon. You can see them from satellites. It's a very, very special place. The Murray River is a highly regulated river. The Barma Milua Forest Icon Site lives only because annual floodwaters are allowed into the forest by river managers. If these are not enough, environmental water is added to the system to keep the habitats healthy. Environmental water is critical to the Barma Milua Forest system because river regulation has taken away a lot of the aspects of the natural flooding regime that the plants and animals depend on. So with judicial use of a little bit of environmental water at the correct time and rate can pay really big dividends. And one of those is nesting water birds. We find that when the water birds nest en masse, that if the river drops too quickly because of river regulation, they might abandon their nesting attempt en masse. Whereas if we can just keep the wetlands flooded just for that little intervening period, or a little bit longer, we can maintain those water birds nesting quite successfully all the way through until they fledge. And that's really rewarding. So yeah, these are the transects that's going to fly. There's the Australian white ibis, the straw-necked ibis and the glossy ibis. We use those in a lot of our work because they, they're what's called an indicator species. So they represent the health of the environment as a whole. So if we can see a breeding colony through to completion, it means that there's enough fish, frogs and everything else in the environment to keep them and their chicks healthy. In that way, they can indicate the health of, of a total system. So it's not just about the birds, it's about the entire ecosystem as a whole. The environmental response of this watering is monitored every year by the Living Murray program. The University of New South Wales is exploring better ways to do this. One of these ways is to use an infrared camera on a drone to count fledglings in the nests. I fly the drone in a grid and that allows us to collect imagery across an entire area. That grid, we then stitch all the images together to form a mosaic and it's geo-referenced, which means you can place it correctly in space. And then I have code and I write script, which allows me to, to run automated counts to identify species. So both to tell the difference between species and then to get a count of those species. Or we deploy trail cameras where we might better pick up species that you cannot see from aircraft. Things like Australasian bittern, which are incredibly cryptic or secretive birds that blend into the surrounding vegetation so well that the only way you tend to see them if you don't flush them is by trail cameras um, that just secretly record their movements. 